Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to Sound for Visual Media. It's been a really long time. Our last episode of this series aired way back in July and it's almost 2022 now, so I'm sorry that it's taken so long. But anywho, today we're looking at my mixing template and I was gonna show you my 5.1 template and in the last episode we went over the basics of 5.1. But since that episode came out, both Rhea Verb and Rhea Surround have gone through a lot of changes and I need to update my template to reflect that. But my stereo mixing template would be a great place to start anyway since structurally it's pretty similar to my 5.1 template. So maybe we can get the structure bits of that out of the way and in the next episode we'll do a brief tutorial of Rhea Surround and then I'll show you what's changed in my template and we'll talk about how I set up my monitoring and my fold down mixes and all that stuff as well. As always, make sure to check out the blog post for this episode as I'll be posting some extra information in there and you can also download my template. But for now, let's jump in and take a look at my stereo mixing template. All right, so here's the template and you can download this in the blog as always. On mine, I use lots of third-party plugins, but in this version, I changed what I could to stock Reaper plugins and JSFX so that it'll be more university compatible for all of y'all. But of course, feel free to change that and use some of your own go-to plugins. And in the blog, I'll tell you the names of all the third-party plugins that I use, for some of which I haven't found a stock or JSFX replacement. So we'll get into that in the blog post and maybe I'll do a stream of one of my film mixes one of these days. But all told, it's 112 tracks. And a lot of the tracks are the same. So there are only a handful of track types that we're dealing with here. So really, this is a really simple template at its core. Let's look at the routing in this diagram because in Reaper, it may not exactly be clear what's going on with that. So when all is said and done, apart from the full film mix, which we will record to the print track, we're usually asked to deliver three stems, known as DME stems, for reasons covered in the last episode. The DX stem is made up of Dialog and Walla, Dialogue is pretty self-explanatory, but you may not be familiar with Walla or you may know it by a different name. So Walla tracks are a type of ambience track, but made up of human voices. This ranges from sounds of a crowd at a dive bar concert the drummer, eh? to the sound of people haggling at a crowded market. The global elite have taken the world hostage. This is not a metaphor anymore. The reason they live under the dialogue stem is that they are tied to language. So in foreign language dubs of movies where the original language dialogue is replaced, the Walla gets replaced too. Most of the time Walla is not mixed loud enough for the words to be intelligible, hence the name. <laughs> because a bunch of people kind of talk in the background kind of sounds like Walla 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 Walla. But sometimes the director may ask for call outs from a Walla performer. These are more specific reactions based on the context, but they're largely unscripted and again, mixed very low. <laughs> Every once in a while though, a call out is so good, you just gotta mix it loud enough for it to be heard. In my first project, I recorded Walla for the scene where a bunch of futuristic cops start harassing pedestrians. I was recording specific call outs for that scene when one of the Walla performers came up with this absolute gem of an unscripted line. I love having this badge against fucking punch kids. I mean, a line like that, you just gotta keep it in. So in our template, we have eight Walla tracks, which are routed into the Walla bus. And of course, we'll talk about recording and editing Walla in more detail later. On the dialogue side, we have a few more types of tracks. First off, we have all the production dialogue. This is everything that was recorded on set. So by the mix stage, they are already declicked, edited, and chopped up into parts. So there are four dialogue tracks. There are three fill tracks, which is kind of the ambience recorded on set and edited as a bed under all the dialogue. And a final track, including all the production effects. So these are the sounds that were recorded on set as part of the performance, like an angry door close or a performer drinking. And while we usually replace these with Foley or hard effects, dialogue editors are still going to place all of those on track eight. And you can mute that if you want, or you can blend a little bit of those in with the hard effects and Foley that has been added in post-production. So that brings a total to eight tracks. The eight strip tracks below include discarded production audio. So onset sound is usually recorded with a boom, as well as a bunch of laughs. But by this point, we've usually made a choice about which one we want to go with on which scene. 
So whichever one we end up not using just gets stored in the strip tracks, just in case they're needed. But if you really kind of trust your dialogue editor, you're probably not even going to look at the strip tracks. After that, there are also six post-production dialogue tracks. So there are three ADR tracks. An ADR is dialogue recorded offset in a studio, which we will need to kind of match to the sound and ambience of each scene. And then there are two FUTS tracks. So FUTS refers to dialogue recorded that needs to sound a specific way. For example, coming from a phone, inside a spacesuit, or from inside the trunk of a car. They're called FUTS because we take a normal recording that was recorded in a studio and we FUTS with it to sound like a phone or a robot or whatever. Finally, there are two dialogue reverbs titled A and B. So the A verb is used on every odd numbered scene and the B verb is used on every even numbered one. So this way, as we automate the reverbs between scenes, we won't have like an audible change in reverb settings happening in the space of one frame. It also allows us to mix in the tail of a reverb from one scene to kind of carry us to the next for effect and smoother transitions. So this applies to A and B verbs found elsewhere in this template. So I won't repeat this point later on when you see A and B verbs. Just remember A is scenes one, three, five, seven, and so on. And B is two, four, six, eight, etc. So including the dialogue master track and excluding the strip, that brings our total to 16 tracks. And as you will see across this entire template, everything is kind of organized into banks of eight tracks. That's because most post-production mixing consoles work with banks of eight tracks. Eight is also the number of our non-thumb fingers. So in effect, it's the number of volume faders we can automate at the same time. Now, how these banks of eight are organized changes from person to person. But if we look at our template here, we can see that the master track plus all the main dialogue tracks make two banks of eight. But also I can look at all dialogue tracks plus the wall of bus fader as two banks of eight. And that will be the first containing production dialogue and the latter rank of eight containing all ADR, FUTs, effects, and the wall of bus. The wall of bus itself also contains eight tracks, so it becomes its own bank of eight when we need to get in there and uncollapse it and kind of mix them together. But at the end, we just have one fader to control the entire wall of levels for our mix. So all these tracks are routed to the dialogue master where we can control the overall levels, compression, and denoising amount of the entire project, or we can automate it scene by scene. And all the tracks are equipped with a high pass EQ and a compressor at fully neutral settings, which we will automate as we mix. All of our dialogue tracks are routed to the A and B verbs as well with sends out minus infinity. And again, we will automate this on a scene by scene basis. <laughs> The MX stem, the music stem is pretty simple. We just have 12 music tracks, A and B reverbs, and a delay track. Once again, bringing the total to 16 tracks, including the music master track. And this may seem low compared to even kind of the average rock song, but bear in mind that by the time we get to a film mix, the music has already been delivered as stems that are fully mixed. And the music reverbs are more often used when the music is diegetic, meaning that it's coming from the setting of the scene and it is not a score that is accompanying the visuals. And again, this stuff gets a little more complex when you get to 5-1 music, because sometimes the music that you receive has been mixed in stereo. So we'll cover music in a lot more depth later on in the series as well. Finally, the SFX stem contains everything that isn't music or dialogue. So it's made up of three separate buses. The first one is the SFX bus containing 16 tracks plus the usual A and B verb and also a FUTS track. Now again, FUTSing SFX usually falls on the SFX editor, again, due to its complexity and the film mix usually being a really rushed process. But still, sometimes the mixer may want to FUTS a certain sound effect kind of their own way. Also bear in mind that despite the fact that Reaper can easily house any kind of item on any track, regardless of channel count and format and stuff, I do my best to keep my mono items on SFX tracks 1 to 8 and my stereo items on tracks 9 to 16. This is not at all mandatory, of course, but just kind of a nice thing to do in case you're using any kind of specific effects that are only in mono or only in stereo. And also just a nice thing to do in case you ever want to deliver anything to like a Pro Tools user, right? Because those poor kids just 
don't have the luxuries that we take for granted. Hell, they just got parent tracks recently. <laughs> So once again, we have two banks of eight for our children SFX tracks, plus three FX receive tracks and the master for a total of 20, which is not divisible by eight. But just hold on to that thought for a moment while we get to the other two. So next up, we have BGs, aka background tracks, aka ambience tracks. So these are non-Walla ambiences that kind of set the sonic scene. And once again, are usually mixed quite low usually around the minus 30 dB LKFS range for kind of calmer backgrounds, give or take 5 dB for insanely quiet or insanely loud spaces. Just like with Walla tracks, there's no effects here. BG tracks are already edited or even recorded to match the ambience of the scene. So we usually do next to no processing on them, except for the old, you know, EQ and compressor, if that. Much like Reverb's AMB, the ABG tracks are where we lay our ambiences for odd numbered scenes and BBG tracks are for even numbered scenes. Each set of eight tracks is routed to a bus before going to the entire BG bus. So you can actually do some top down mixing per scene if pressed for time by just EQing and compressing them as a whole. After we cover 5.1, we're gonna jump into editing BGs and get into lots of detail on all this kind of stuff. And I've already done a brief overview of them in the SFX editing episode as well, which will be linked above and below and all over the place. Finally, we have the Foley bus containing 14 tracks plus the usual two reverb receives. The 14 tracks are the same as my Foley recording template. So the first four are footsteps, the next eight are props, the 13th track is cloth, and I recently began using a Foley room tone track, but this is a very uncommon staple in the Foley bus. It's just something I do and you may disagree with it, in which case, delete it. Almost no one ever sends cloth to a reverb, so those tracks aren't routed to the reverbs. And of course, hopefully by this point, it's clear that nothing you see in this template are like hard set rules. Really the point of templates is to speed up getting started. So given your context, you may need more dialogue tracks if you're working with a film that has eight main characters. You may need more ADR if it's an animation because there's no onset dialogue. You may not need wall tracks at all. You may need double the number of SFX tracks if it's a, you know, space epic that you're doing. So this template really makes it easy to get started and you can always delete stuff. You can always duplicate stuff. And really, do I even need to say any of that? Probably not. But I know if I don't, somebody will be like, oh, well, what if I don't need Walla? It's like, well, delete it. Get rid of it. My philosophy is always to kind of start the template with more than what you need. And then deleting is a lot easier than having to add stuff. So now circling back to why our SFX tracks add up to 20, the final four are our BG buses and the Foley bus. The name of the game in film mixing is really to divide and conquer. So people will usually mix SFX first, two banks, then quickly mix the Foley and BGs for scenes that need them, then just collapse the buses and mix the SFX, Foley and BG, plus all the effects in another bank of eight. With my template, you will also see some track layouts included, which you can easily switch to. And if you do use a fader controller of sorts, you can always kind of assign shortcuts to these and navigate between them. So let's go over those real quick as well. I've gone over kind of how to save your own track views in the tutorial linked above. And if you do end up modifying this, you may want to kind of get in there and also make sure your track views are up to date. So to load my track views, I have set up these load keys. F4 to F6 are for my main three track views. Shift and F4 to F6 are for each stem. And then there are four additional ones for SFX, which I load with Control Shift and F4 to F7. So F4 makes all my tracks visible, but all the children tracks are collapsed. Then if I hit F5, I'll get only the top level tracks with all the children hidden. So this is really useful for the end when you are making more macro changes and final touches to the mix and printing them to stems and the final mix print. Then if I hit F6, I once again show all my tracks, but this time they are not collapsed. So it gets pretty big in this track view. From either of these views, but mostly from F6, I then have some cycle actions that hide and mute subgroups of my tracks. I've already gone over how I made them in episode two of this series, and also in one of the Rapid Fire Reaper tutorial episodes. All of these cycle actions I have placed on one of my toolbars, so I can hit these to hide and mute or unhide and unmute my dialogue tracks, for example, 
Then I got my Walla, hit this and they're gone. The next one is music, that's gone. SFX, BGs, Foley. And if I want to, from here, I can just show and hear my dialogue or mute those and just hear my Walla or whatever, based on what we want to focus on. So like music and SFX here, maybe just SFX and Foley, you get the picture. Whatever I want to focus on, I can mute and hide the rest easily using this toolbar. Next up, if I hit Shift and F4, I get all the tracks from my dialogue stem. So that's all children, buses, and the stem track itself. The wall of bus is collapsed and strip tracks are hidden. So when I mix my dialogue, I can just see these. Now track views won't mute anything else, but they just kind of visually declutter stuff. Just give me kind of a micro project to look at while I focus on specific areas of the mix. After that, Shift and F5 is just all the tracks from the music stem, nothing else. And finally, Shift and F6, that's our E stem or the SFX stem, which are the SFX buses, the FX, and then the BG and Foley bus, like that. Since this stem is the biggest, I then have four additional track views just for this one. So Shift, Control, and F4 shows me just my children SFX tracks. This is probably the biggest part of the mix after the dialogue mix is done. Shift, Control, and F5 is all top level tracks in the SFX bus, which is another bank of eight to work with here. And then Shift, Control, and F6 is our BGs. F7 is our Foley. And from any of these, I can quickly hit F4 to get back to the main project with all the tracks showing. Just like that, Bob's your uncle. It's a good thing. So I'm going to show you a populated version of this template for a film I edited and mixed recently on a live stream so that people can come and ask questions while I go over it. But for now, let's just cover all the extra tracks that we haven't mentioned yet and call it a day. So as you can see, the master parent sent on all my buses are disabled because they are routed to my stem tracks. Those are solo defeated, so sound is always going through those, no matter what I solo or mute. So for example, my DX stem is receiving all audio from my dialogue master track and the Walla bus at Unity Gain, and then sends those to the master track of the whole project. I'll show you why I have it set up like this in a second. This is of course my preference, and you can always do whatever you want. Our M stem is again receiving audio from the music master track and sending it to the main master track. And finally, our E stem is receiving audio from the SFX bus, the three effects receive tracks, BGs and Foley. So you may have noticed that inside all our subgroups, the reverbs and other effects are children of the bus track, but in our SFX bus, this is not the case. And in fact, the SFX bus itself is sending to the E stem, but also sending to the SFX reverbs at minus infinity. The reason for that is sometimes you may have a single sound effect that is made up of four or eight or 12 layers of sounds. So in those cases, it's really easier just to automate the send on the parent track versus you know sending each track one by one to the reverb when they all make up like the same sound effect. Or sometimes all SFX from an entire scene may just go to the same reverb. So this routing becomes really useful in those cases. Of course, the way we use reverb in film is super different from how we use it in music and it involves a lot more automation. So this topic deserves a lot more of a deep dive, which we'll do in due time. But yeah, otherwise we can see that all reverbs on other buses are contained within the bus itself, except for the SFX. You can also see that all my faders are at Unity and all effects are bypassed by default. Really these days I do a lot more with just item effects and item volume versus track effects and volume automation, but they can of course make our job easier and also we can assign their parameters to a controller of some sorts if we have that. Once the mix is done, we can go to our stem tracks and arm them for recording. And we also have this stereo print track. So our master track is sending to the master output so we can hear the mix, but it's also sending to this print track. So it takes in audio from all our stem tracks and just sends them onto this track for printing purposes. So usually the procedure is we do our mix, then we arm the stem tracks and record them. They're all set to record their output in stereo. So you go to the beginning, arm the tracks, record the project through. Then once that's done, you basically just mute the receives on these tracks. You may do some extra master processing on the whole project based on loudness requirements or apply a specific 3K roll-up filter that is used for screening in a theater, more on that later. And then you just unarm the stem tracks, arm the final track and you print the final film mix. 
You can of course just render, but I am used to printing live and it gives you one last chance to kind of monitor the whole mix. And the benefit to that is also that if you're printing like a long feature film and you just notice one thing you want to change, you know, past the 45 minute mark, you won't need to cancel the render and render again from the beginning. You just make the change, go back a few seconds to kind of a quiet part, and then just start recording again from there. Then you just put small crossfades between the recordings, and then finally just glue and render those bits. So it takes a lot less time than running multiple 90 minute renders. So that's what I prefer. We can just rename these, adding the name of the film to the beginning. And once we finish recording, it's all ready to rock. But again, I wait until all the stems are done and then I can just render an audio file with no effects on it and I'll name those. We'll do an actual print at some point as well. This final track is called IND, import and delete. And it's just there so when we import files, we can use that as like a landing zone. And then when prompted, we just choose separate tracks so that everything we bring in are on top of each other on separate tracks below. And then once everything is imported, we just kind of drag them up to the right group. And we can keep this because we sometimes import fixes as we do a mix. Again, a topic we'll cover later. And then at the end, we'll just delete this one. Our video itself goes on the first track, which has this master out with disabled. So just watch the movie, maybe modify the template based on what you do and don't need in a film. Do your thing, mix that film, get that money. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you like the work I do, you can donate to me through buymeacoffee.com or you can become a member of this channel. All the relevant links will be in the description. As always, make sure to check out the blog where you can download my template. Other than that, take care of yourselves. And this time I promise the next episode won't be in six months. Bye.